Hey everyone, Jörg Mark is here, your friend in sales. I hope you're having a great one. Although we are going through this pandemic right now, but there's when there's a will, there's a way. And this is when I wanted to make this quick video to help you guys out if you are a little like what to do next. And this is the this is the thing. If you are a door-to-door -door salesperson, if you are an individual that goes like door to door and meet people on a regular basis, now you're kind of stuck, right? Because you need to train, you need to change your strategy. You get my cat there over there. And any anywho, this is what I wanted to share with you. So, if you can't do things like in the regular way, and you don't know how long this whole craziness is going to to last until you can actually start doing your thing again, well. You need to figure things out and you need to remember the thing that I have in my book that took me a while to get this uh, clear in my mind, which is you need a lot of leads, right? So you need to find a way of having lots of leads, lots of people to talk to. And there are several ways to talk to people, right? So at this time, what I'm doing that is working, not as effective, but it is working, I started to double down my efforts on my online presence. If you are, let's say, an accountant or like an architect or a designer or someone that does math really well and can explain it to people, you can't leave that like to the last minute to start developing it. Because the, he, here's the thing, online presence, you should not count on that, but you should build it. Because it takes a long time until people start following you, until people start seeing you as a credible person to keep listening to. And this is the problem, because most people, they're like, who is this guy, right? But if they knew what he, what he does on a regular basis, if he knew they were sure that this guy actually knows what he's talking about, why wouldn't people listen, right? Because at this point in time, there are people looking for your services. This is the crazy part, right? <laughs> Just because you are at home and the economy is like a little off, it doesn't mean people are not spending money because people still need stuff, right? You need food, right? You need electricity, right? You have uh, some sort of online exam. You need to understand how that crap works, right? So you need someone to explain that to you, right? So people still need stuff. It's just the approach is a little different. If you don't have like a running store, like a restaurant or anything like that, if you're like sales, direct sales approach, you use a cell phone, right? What I'm doing right now that is working is twofold. The first one is the first one, the first thing that I was telling you about, which is my site. I doubled down on my efforts uh, in order to, uh, like I wrote more articles. I started spending more on ads, Facebook, Google ads, all that stuff. So I could like start navigating through it. And you will hear a lot of people saying they are experts in SEO and all that stuff. They're really not, because if they were, they were pretty doing like pretty well. So like, I'm not an expert in that type of stuff, but I started learning, right? And then you start becoming better because you start tuning things up. Remember, it's like your money, like you're spending like 500 bucks. And I'm like, what the hell, dude? Didn't you have a lead? What's the problem? And you follow all the tutorials, right? So it's a process, you start learning it. You don't need other people to do that, really. It's like, you do that one time, like, and the thing is done, right? And then you keep improving it. Like, the, the thing still stays there, right? So it's not that hard. You just need to keep working on it until you, like, get the thing working properly. And this is the thing. So the first one is online thing. You need to build your online presence and double down your efforts in order to make more videos, like, use email marketing, like learn SEO, learn all that stuff so that you can do it, right? And then you have something that it like starts building. I'll give you an example. The first site that I built for insurance, like because I, I can only sell insurance for people here in Portugal, right? I like had zero visits. And then I learned about backlinks. So I started getting more online presence. Like then I learned about ads. So like more people are coming now, and like from, day zero to day like 30, now you have like 1,000 people going there. Like this is like a large number, right? It doesn't make you a genius, right? You just start figuring this shit out because it's survival, right? 
So you need to focus on solutions that work. And remember, if you need leads and people are at home, this is a good time for you to build more stuff because they, are, they, are self, they have their cell phone glued to the head. It's like they're looking at YouTube, they're looking at Google, they're looking at online things. So you need to be online, right? But you just cannot count on it like 100% like full that the whole thing is going to work. Because in the beginning, you're gonna suck, right? And then you suck less, like, and then you start getting better, right? <laughs> so you keep, need to keep building this stuff because in time it starts compounding. This is the thing. The other one that is working well for me is LinkedIn. And what I mean by LinkedIn is not sending a bunch of random emails and then expecting things to go right back at you in a good way. I mean like call, call people. What I'm doing that is working is like I made a list of the people that kind of fit the criteria. Like when I look at them and say, this is the guy that I can actually pay this type of stuff and might be interested. And in Portugal, there are lists about around 5,000 people, I think. It's a list that they publish every year, which is like companies that are doing pretty well, but they are not like super large. They're like, they're not like the, the crappy stuff that you see out there, but they are not still at the top, but they have money, right? They have resources. And these are the types of people that like on a, like a regular basis, if you go there like to their store or like to their warehouse or whatever they, their company is established, the dude is there, right? And he does have money. And it's usually a mom and pop shop, right? So they're usually like um, asset, asset rich and cash poor. Which, what that means is that they have a lot, lots of machinery, lots of equipment, and not that many, like not lots, lots of money in the bank. So they make a great fit for, for insurance products, especially life insurance, which is the, the field that, I'm, that I chose to focus on. So since now we are in a situation that like, calling those people like going door to door directly like now you're a little stuck now man you just pick up the phone and call them and what i do is i go on linkedin like type the types of like the the company name and then type like manager right so it's like manager x company or you do do that in google even better it's like manager whatever the name of the company is right and then linkedin use those three keywords and then where you start seeing on the, the search engine results, it's like close matches. Sometimes it's not that dude, right? But it's a company that's pretty close in the neighborhood. So you add that company and you keep doing this process over and over again. So you follow the list until you run out of, uh, how do they call it? It's like, you're rude. You can't send more leads today. They send you like a, like a, a pop-up uh, thingy telling you that, dude, that's enough. So you keep doing that until the LinkedIn thingy tells you that that's enough. Now it's usually around 50, I think, or 100, so something like that. You can wait like half an hour or one hour, and then you keep doing the thing again. And what I do is the guys that like say the connection is like you have like connected to them, some of them have cell phone numbers. And you don't even send an email, you just cold call them. And now when I mean cold calling is like with actually with a cell phone. And you'd be surprised that some of them would listen. And here's the trick, something that I've learned of like, because I'm in sales. There are people that are from their, the way of being, they are socially natured. They are social prone. They like, they need to connect with people. They are more open to having a, a nice conversation. That's their, this is how they approach the world. And those people usually they have two things and you notice that immediately in their profile. The first one is that the most obvious one, they have their cell phone number there. If they aren't social, why in the world would they put their cell phone number there, right? So it's like they're saying, dude, you can call me, right? And they are decision makers, right? And this is, this is the other thing. The only people that you're kind of looking at the profile, like cell phone number, like sort of decision maker. The only ones that the thing is not gonna work, like is if the dude is not smiling or pay attention to this one, is actually not the owner. So here's the thing. 
It must be the owner, not like the manager, like a middle management type of thing. It must be that they do that with the money, right? And it must be smiling, right? Or something in between. And what I mean is sometimes you see like a picture, right? No, you don't see no headshot or anything. They have a cell phone number and then it says something like 45 years doing real estate, right? This is a credible person, right? Don't need the picture. He has a cell phone there. And he's saying like he does investments. So this is like in, in the middle of the ballpark thing. This is the only exceptions. Like no headshot, but it's like, dude, I do investments. I have been doing that for 45 years. Like here's my cell phone number. Call me. Right? What I've learned is that these types of people, I mean like qualified people, they don't email back. Most of them, it's like nine out of 10 people, they don't email back. Because from their perspectives, they are looking at if the dude is credible, he's going to have a balls and call me, right? So this is the thing. This is what will separate you from the rest of the bunch. Most people are like scared crows and like hunching, like, oh my God, like, man. man, entrepreneurs are problem solvers. You throw me down the sink, I'll come out on the other side with a plumbing's license or plumber's license, whatever, if it's like US or UK. Dude, I'm in Portugal, so like I'm learning. And this is what I wanted to share with you. It's like some people see problems and like doors closed everywhere. Entrepreneurs find a way to open a door, right? So if you are at a specific point right now and all of us are going through this, that you are like being like stopped from doing the thing that you do the best, like dude, pick up a phone and build your online presence. What I've learned from people that have been doing that for a while, especially in the online world, is that all of them told me the same thing. It takes a while, like it takes years to build an online presence. And you see that in people. It's like they sh show themselves like gurus and then like two years in, you stop hearing from them, right? So they fail. So, and then you see people that like, they keep doing it, right? And some after like four or five years, they keep building backlinks, like people like, start looking at them in a different way and looking at them and say like, hey, this is, must be pretty credible. He's been doing this for a while, right? So this is the same thing. And this is what I wanted to share with you guys. So when the whole craziness like goes away and you start doing your thing again, you can't stop doing this. So you need to allocate some time to keep developing your online presence because this is important. It, it will stay there, right? Even if you suck in the beginning, like, like I told you, like, I didn't understand exactly what I was doing, but I look in some tutorials and I keep adjusting the thing. And then the, the ad spending, I was like, okay, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, okay, 500 bucks. Like that type of approach. You're like looking at things like caution and then caution and then pump in the gas, right? And then the other thing is try to direct outreach to people don't use email, man. Email is like specific situations. The best approach to this one is that you use your skills as a salesperson to evaluate the situation, although it's LinkedIn. So you're looking at a profile, the dude has a cell phone number there, so it shows confidence, unless he forgot and just put the cell phone in because he's an idiot. But in most cases, they, they know what they're doing, right? And then you see in the profile, they're either smiling and then when he says like, CEO, or like they actually, they are the owner, not middle management, or the, the thing in between, which is don't even have a headshot. They have like a crappy picture there, like, or like saying investment dude, right? But then you see something in interesting, which is like 40 years or 45 years or 50 years in doing that, right? And they have a cell phone number there. So they're pretty much saying that, dude, so these people are qualified. So what you need to do is every single day that you wake, wake up, practice your pitch, know your stuff well, and you probably do that, but keep working on it to improve the thing. Because now people are not seeing you, they are hearing you, and in their minds they're like creating an idea of you based on the way that you speak and the way that you present things and the way that you answer them back, right? And this is what has been working for me. And the last one that I wanted to share with you guys is that you need to double down on your, on your relationships. And this is one of the most important things. I've learned from being 
like selling in a multitude of industries and finally landing in something that I've, I should have gone in when I was like 10 or earlier. And I knew that because I actually loved the finance sector. But anyway, that's another story. What you need to do is, and this is really important, I, I've learned that business is done by relationships. Economies are, business, are built out of businesses. It's like a bunch of businesses working, right? And then the economy is like the whole overall sum of a bunch of businesses, right? But business is done by relationships. It's like you're an accountant. I have my company. I need an accountant. You need a client, right? It's a relationship. And as long as you keep serving me, like do your accounting thing, and like, and I keep paying you as a client, like we keep building a good relationship, right? And this is the thing. When things start to get stressed out, you can tap into your relations and see like how can you like help each other. And I'll give you an example. When I started selling insurance, I started doing my, my thing. I didn't know better, so it's like door to door call, like, dude, I'm here, let me help you out with your insurance. Like and people that are on the other side, the guy was like they look they, like, they look at the situation from their perspective and see she's like me or, like, or he's like me or whatever the case might be, right? Because they, they, they sense a connection. They don't know what that is, but they're an entrepreneur, right? They, they see the struggle. They see the guy is looking there like he's a hustler, right? He has the balls that go st stuck right in and say, I'm an insurance dude. Like, I'm an accountant. Like, let's work together, right? If there's a bond, if the guy connects, and that, that happened in that specific situation, the guy, like, he had a restaurant, and I didn't know uh, that up to that point, like, it's like, it's a bunch of money. It's like a pretty famous restaurant, right? I just didn't, because it didn't used to go th through that street. So I went there, like, he's the owner, right? He's looking at the situations, and he's looking at the situation, and, like, I got me all the paperwork, and I started looking it, into it, and he signed on the spot. It was like 4,500 like premiums there, like but not paid like installments. It's like on the spot, right? I don't see that that often, right? It's not like like 5,000 bucks is a lot of money. It is in some contexts. It it is not in other contexts. But in that specific situation, given the type of people that I was like used to dealing with up to that point, because I didn't know any better, it's like, dude. Just have like 4,500 here, like on the spot, right? And his wife was there, so we got a connection. Like I, it was a double sale. It's either the company, uh, like a triple sale actually. It's like him, wife, and the company. And what I, what I mean about relationships is that in time, you'll see that when you're like in the stress situation, like uh, putting, putting uh, you have your like, being stress test in this specific social department, like you need clients, right? You can tap in to the good relationships that you have that are in good standing. And this is the most important thing. I think sometimes we forget this. It's like new, 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 new. And then you forget that the other guys that are already your clients. So you need to make a point of keep the relationship intact, like birthdays, like, Christmas thingies, like moments like when they call you, you answer them back immediately and try to be helpful because all that stuff will compound up to a point that when you get to a situation like this, you can pick up the phone and call. And this is what I did. I called him again, right, and said, listen, I, I can help you guys. What do you guys need? And he said, well, we closed now. Like, what is it? So I contacted the insurance company and see like, we need to help those guys out. And I actually gave him a phone number of, an inch of a lawyer that I know is a pretty famous one. Look, if you even need like further assistance, this is the guy to call to. It's like the largest, like, this is big, this is a shark one. It's like the biggest lawyer here. So this is direct cell phone number, call him, right? So I'm trying to be helpful in any way, I don't know, think about restaurants besides like going there and eat right but i can help those guys because i know some people right get to guess what the guy did for me i called him like in the next day and said listen 
the, the thing is like working and all that. So I'll be honest with you. I'm like in a struggle here because I don't have any clients, right? <laughs> How in the world am I going to pay rent next month, right? And he gave me contacts of people like him. The same way that when you got when you got there in the first time, like he looked at you like he, he could see right through you and see like this is this is one of us, right? So when it was time, like I tried to help because he was expecting that because you're like them, right? And now I was the one that needed some help. So I called him, like he gave me a couple a couple of leads to call to. These are major people. I mean like people that like spending Two million, I kid you not, like just on employees, R right? So it's like direct cell phone number. You're calling some dude, right? Gives you a phone number of another dude that it just out of employees is playing like two million, two mil, right? I'm guessing you wouldn't have any problems paying like say 100,000 in premiums for life insurance. Right, all this because the first thing I did was cold calling, right? Direct, like door to door, like we connected, right? I served him well, I kept the relationship. When it was time, he needed help, I was the most helpful I could be, right? And when I called back, right, he gave me cell phone numbers of people with money, right? And this is what I wanted to share with you guys, so. If you are at this point right now, this is what I've been using for myself. So use it, share the results because I just want to help people like like us, right? Because we are door to door people. It's like a, a dying breed, I think. Anyway, I just wanted to make this video to help you guys out. If you like this video, remember to subscribe. Click that bell thingy below so you can get notified every time that I make new videos like this. Oh, and by the way, if you like reading, because it, now it's a good time to read. Hold on, uh, cat fur here. Remember to go to byudigital.com slash book. I have a cool sales letter there, like I, because I'm a creative dude. And it's about helping you guys structure the right framework, the right set of mind that you need to have when you are doing sales. And this is one I wanted to share with you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.